you walk off and you come back here. This is not the clearing. This is just my de facto forest map. Uh, oh. This is a different clearing. So you three, Tix, um, Leah, and Draco had all moved. Um, they'd all, all you've all moved into that path. Forty-five minutes later, since Brontor is also heading your way, you guys meet in the middle and you find each other again. Brontor, my boy. And, uh, you've now found your your uh, little little. What are you, gnome? Uh, by this time, since it's taken so long, it is night. It's a very clouded sky. It's very dark, and you've just found each other. Brontor, I run up and hug him. Where have you been? Uh, having a cup of tea. Oh, and you didn't invite your good buddy? <laughs> no, no, that's not what I was doing. I sort of got... So basically, during you guys' fight, I talked to them. And then they took me to this house thing, building. Uh, and there's a king guy. Anyway, there's this other guy who knows where the um flower is. And he wants me to go there with you guys uh, in four nights time and help him find it but the tribesman person also gave me this can i and i pass them the message that is the uh, parchment it is on the back side of the poster uh which had the original quest um it seems like it's been drawn in using whatever they could find. Like, obviously, they, they didn't have a lot of uh, writing implements. Um, some of it seems to be written in, like, dirt and, like, mud, as if someone's, like, finger drawn it. Um, it's very, very badly written, like someone who doesn't know how to write well at all. Is that the same flower that we were sent to hunt for? Well, it's um, hard to make out from this picture, but it's a similar-looking... Uh, and the the other thing was the king guy had a uh, golden horn. Let me remind you that it is currently uh, very late, probably around yeah. ten, eleven, oh, and it's getting dark. Right. Sleep on it. It's almost pitch black, and you're in the middle of a forest. Yeah, let's mm -hmm. sleep on it. You guys are all surrounding your little campfire, <laughs> so everyone, uh, you start to go to sleep. The campfire has been lit. Um, it's very cold, there's water right there, and you've got no shelter. So everyone give me survival checks. So, who's on first watch, or is none of you on watch? Are you guys just going to sleep it? Are you guys going to have a I'll guard? I'll go on watch. Okay, you, you'll need three people on watch in turn. So, uh, Tess, give me a 1d100. Uh, so Draco, he's up in the night, he's, you know... Looking around, um, it's kind of cold, there's the rivers bubbling, and it's just a cold night, you know, Dreary spends two, three, four hours up, bored as hell, just staring at himself, and nothing happens, eventually, it's the end of his watch, who's going to take second watch? Oh, I'll, and I'll camouflage on my rock. <laughs> okay, you take second watch, as you are on watch, you are stealth, and... You look over to the other side of the river with your perception, your pretty good perception, and you see a large silhouette start to emerge from the trees. And it doesn't seem to see you yet, but it starts lumbering out of the trees. And as it gets closer, it's very large, much larger than you, the little gnome. As it starts to get closer, you can make out more and more of its features and its skin and its ha its hair and its body or more like its lack of skin hair and body in fact it doesn't have any of those it has bones lots of bones and nothing in between those bones it is skeletal and as it comes out into the light a dead minotaur a skeletal minotaur it's already dead it doesn't have to do anything and it starts slowly walking this way, it will drink from the river. And it will start to drink, and as you notice it, uh, the water will go into its mouth, and it doesn't have a throat, or a stomach, or anything, and the water just 
goes into its skull face and starts dripping out the back of it all over the bones and just onto the ground. It goes nowhere. It see it in in a, in a second. It just perks its head up and it sees the fire on the other side of the uh, river, which you know makes no sense since it doesn't have eyes, but it it senses the fire, the warmth maybe, and it it, it stands up again. It has a giant cleaver like it raises it up to its face and and it stares over at the campfire, and then a few seconds later, it takes a step forward into the water. Is there any way in which I can sort of try and alert them or have a chance of trying alerting them without letting the thing know that I'm there? Well, you're stealth. You have that advantage currently. If you alert them, you're more than likely to alert him. Yeah, you can slide off the rock slowly and grab a pebble. And by uh, the way, um... by this time, he's taken another square forward. He's now like 15 feet from Tix. I chuck the rock at Leia. And considering I'm now right next to Draco, I'm probably about to sort of waste him as well. Um, so you can give me an athletics or an ac- no, yeah, an athletics to throw the rock. So you miss so the rock. The rock sails over. Yeah, the pebble <laughs> flies over and lands in the water, making a splash. Takes note of the uh, pebble. He moves his head to the side, but uh, he's not that idiotic. He can tell there's just something landing in the water. And it stops him for a moment. He takes, he like stands back up and he, he looks over, but it doesn't stop him. It just slows him down a bit. Can I try and throw another rock then? Or Give me another athletics. Do you throw it? And it arcs over Draco's sleeping body and hits Leah right in the head. Ow. And you wake up. And you, you wake up, but you know, I don't think anyone would really wake up. Even usually. People don't usually wake up very silently, like they make a bit of movement. And yeah, if you've just yeah, been yeah. But hit it's better on... than the other two would have yeah, done. You've also just been hit on the head with a rock. I wake up with a blood curling scream. No. I will <laughs> you don't want that. No, I will just wake up and be like, what the fuck? Like <laughs> Okay, give me a perception at disadvantage. You see a large silhouette 30 feet to your left. You don't know what it is or what it's doing or anything about it. You just see a large silhouette. And you also don't know where the rock came from. Can I try and, like, whisper to her? How good is this thing's hearing? You'll have to find out. It doesn't have ears, so... Uh, we are, you can definitely hear him. The Minotaur also perks up and can definitely hear you, and you have lost yourself. He is staring right at you, because you are on the side of that rock, and you're just talking. Uh, After talking, Draco and Tix both uh, perception at disadvantage to see if you heard that talking and woke up from it. No, I don't think I did. (laughs) And uh, Tix did, because he got more than ten. So Tix will wake up, but slowly, similar to Leah, he's uh, not screaming because he didn't get hit on the head, but... He is very confused, and now that he is literally 10, 15 feet away from this giant monster, he can definitely see it. And he is like, what the hell? What is going on? Why? I was gonna wake up Draco, considering I'm right next to him at the moment. Okay. Just normally, um, not trying to throw him at him. You can just wake him up, yeah, sure, he's woken up. Similar to Tix, he is also a bit groggy, doesn't really know what's going on. Task, give me a perception. Mm. Not you. Mm. You what think... should I do? I don't know. Have I seen the thing yet? You have seen the silhouette. You don't know what it is, oh, but you okay. see a giant silhouette with an axe-looking thing. Can I do another like perception check? Yes, you can. Maybe it's a tree. Maybe it's just a shadow <laughs> of a tree. This time, I'll grab onto Draco's shoulder and point <laughs> at the thing and see if he's not blind. Both of you give me D20s. Just just pure D20s. One. Eight. <laughs> you both had some pretty Beautiful. terrible rolls, but I was going to have... Because because there is no, like, grogginess uh, or sleepy tired skill, I was just going to have the D20 as that roll for Tess. So you are like... It's like you just had three cups of coffee. You are bolt right sober and awake. Because you hit a one on the tiredness skill. So... Oh, uh, the tiredness skill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you wanted the one. If you got uh, The Minotaur has made... Let's say another two steps forward, 
Uh, maybe like this is much. Just one step forward. And at this point, everyone, including Leah, can now see him. Tix, is, who is still like in his bedroll, he can now see it literally five feet away from him. The campfire illuminates it. It's right there in front of you. Every, Tix starts yelling. Just he's he's like half asleep, and now there's a giant skeletal minotaur above him. He's screaming. Um, and everyone roll initiative. And now we start with Draco. Draco's first turn. Draco's like wide awake now, and he's like bringing everything in. I think he's just gonna look at the thing, and he's gonna like tell everyone to s stop screaming, and just like walk up to it. Cool. Okay. So he's good aim. How's it going? Yeah, he's just gonna be like. He's going to, like, not really be threatening, he's just going to casually walk up to it. Okay. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to look at it and say, what's up? <laughs> what's up, really? Campsite. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> so, Rontor, it's your turn. If, if that's the end of Draco's. Yeah, that's the end of Draco's turn. Rontor. Um, right, so seeing Draco do that, Rontor decides <laughs> that he will try and hide in his rock again. Considering it hasn't started attacking us yet, I just hide and I'll um sort of like prepare my bow. He, as you say, talk to him, you say, "What's up?" He uh, you know, he, like cocks his head to the side. He doesn't understand what you're saying. He seems to like question it for a second, but maybe it's just a bit of confusion or something. And then he raises his head. He raw. He growls. I don't. I don't know what like the sound a bull would make. You know, and charges at you. Which, 16, does that hit you? No, 17. Uh, and it doesn't hit, it doesn't hit Tix either. He, he lowers his horns and he charges at you. And his horns just barely, like by millimeters, uh, pass either side of your head. His head is so wide because he's so big. The horns just barely pass either side of your armor. And you get, you get hit by the blunt, uh, flat part of the top of his skull. But your armor protects you and it doesn't do any damage. And you step, you hold, you hold fast. You dig your well, your legs into the ground, and you stop him. And he he stands back up. And now it's Leah's turn. That definitely hits. Six plus five will do eleven damage to him. It is Tix's turn. He is now awake. He has stopped screaming. He has seen Draco just stop the ball in front of him. He will take a step out this way. To get away from uh, getting charged at again. Okay, he will use Sacred Flame. Right, I'll use Command. Yeah. Okay. And he gets an 18. Oh, alright. As my bonus action, I'm going to cast another spell. Okay. And it says I can do it as a bonus action. So I'm going to challenge it to a duel. It's Rontor's turn now. So if I attack it, it breaks the spell. It, it currently is focused on Draco, so it has disadvantage if it tries to attack anyone else other than Draco, but if anyone else attacks it, it breaks the spell. I might hold off on attacking it then. I don't know, I'll just sort of move on, I'll just stay waiting. Okay, it is if his he's... turn and he will bring his great axe down, down on, oh and he misses. He hits the mud next to Draco, and it is Leah's turn. Surely Leah's got some spot. Oh, for fuck's sake! What? No. You do. Um. Well, okay. You don't do any damage to him because you missed with the five volt, and nine does not hit. But due to you targeting the Minotaur with a hostile spell or a, a harmful spell, um, Tass's compelled to your spell now has ended it is tix's turn and now that the spell has anyway been broken he will run over here flanking uh the minotaur with draco which gives him advantage on his attack and he will hit with a 20 and get five pierce that's terrible five piercing damage on it draco's just gonna lift up his halberd and go for an attack 15 will hit Alright, I'll shoot at it with my bow. Seeing those two right there, he will charge at them. So, Tix gets an attack of opportunity. He's going, now the Minotaur will do his gore attack. Uh, it does 9 That's plus nine. an extra 2d8, so uh, 2d8. Okay. Which does another 5, so it's 14 damage. And you need to give me a strength save throw. I have to go. Ah. 
Uh, Re okay. uh, Leah falls back to sleep in the middle of the battle. So you are pushed uh, 10 feet away in this direction, doot doot, and you are prone. Yeah, Tix, once again, will rush over here, getting um, advantage on the flank. And he'll end his turn, and it's Draco's turn. Draco is gonna whack it with his help. Eight damage. Eight damage. Oh, it's a low nat one. You shoot Draco in the back. You take two damage, Draco. Uh, uh whose team are you on? <laughs> it is the Minotaur's turn, which he hits finally. It's basically murder, seventeen. I am on one HP. So he chooses uh, himself and Draco and uh, Runtor, and you are all blessed. Yeah. He will he'll remain where he is, and it is Draco's turn. All right, I'm just gonna whack it with my halberd. Fourteen damage. Okay, yeah, I'll climb on top of the rock. All right, I'll try and shoot it again. If you miss, I die. If I use my inspiration, then it cancels. It cancels out, and it becomes just a normal roll. Right, I'll do that then. This is to determine if you die, Draco. He is slain. He collapses into a pile of bones, and uh, his horns crumble into dust, and his massive cleaver act. One so second is, is solid and stabbing you and covered in blood, but when it hits the ground, it turns into dust. It just it disappears into dust. Oh, I wanted to see the bone. <laughs> Everything is just a pile of dust. I am going to fucking sleep. If there is a monster attacking <laughs> us, don't wake me because I'm not so helping. Who's, okay. So everyone sleeps. Um, Drake uh, Tix is now on watch. He will stand up and he will roll a d100. Okay, there's a dragon. <laughs> no, I'll just let you guys sleep. So everyone has a peaceful night's sleep and a, there is a long rest. And it is morning and we will end the session.